Okay, so um, this is my look at the cap to cap transfer and how we lose half the energy when we transfer by way of pure resistance from one cap to the other um, and not through some sort of inductive transfer. So, um, all I've got here is a transformer um, running through one of the primaries um, that goes through a late relay which will be switched by my signal generator um, and this is just across the reed switch and these two here of course the uh, coil that opens and closes that reed switch um, but in no way are connected to the uh, switch itself um, and then we go into our um, empty cap and of course the two negatives are bridged together I have a short across that empty cap to ensure zero volts um, and this is our cap that at the moment has our two volts in it <coughs> theoretically um, we should end up with one volt in each cap both these caps are 50 farads so they're quite large caps so um, what we're going to do first is I'm simply going to take this bridge off of this cap and bridge our relay switch so it'll be a um, pure resistive transfer um, and the resistance value of the primary that we're running through is 2.4 ohms theoretically we should end up with around 1 volt in each cap this way so we're going to do it this way first um, we're not going to pulse the inductor or the coil we're going to set ourselves a benchmark see if we get close to the 1 volt in each cap um, and then in our next run we're going to use a resistive inductive transfer where we'll be pulsing this coil by way of opening and closing the reed switch in this uh, relay switch here our third test we're going to run a resistive we're going to use the resistive inductive transfer method with a load which is going to be taken off of our secondary on this transformer which was the primary side um, of the transformer and it was used in 240 volt mode um, small bridge rectifier here we're simply going to send this to a cap and drive a load from that cap like an LED or something like that and see if taking energy out of the system results um, in different values at the end of each run so um, our starting voltage on cap 1 is 2 volts and on cap 2 it is 0 volts as you can see so now I'm simply going to short this relay switch out and we're going to allow the current to flow through this resistor which is 2.4 ohms once again um, cross that short and into the second cap so here we go now this one will happen fairly quickly um, the second part of our test when we're pulsing the inductor um, to do the transfer takes a lot longer so we'll start it and then I'll switch the camera off and uh, we'll come back when it's nearly complete um, and then we'll once again write down our same results and see if they're any different and so on for the third test the last test uh, you'll see I've left blank because I'm going to leave that at the end of the video I will show you or tell you what that last test is and then um, we're going to carry out that test in the next video it's going to give you time to um, See if you want to have a guess at what the outcome might be. So theoretically once this one hits 1 volt, this one should also be very close to 1 volt. Um, once that is hit 1 volt, we are at the halfway point. Or at the point we want that voltage to be in that cap.
So this will give us a benchmark um, and it will allow us to see if there's any difference between the two caps. A slight variance in capacity. That's handy. So we'll just let it go through until they balance each other out. Until they balance out, and um, we'll write down the end result. But at the moment, looking like we're slightly in front. We've just hit one volt on there, which is half of our starting voltage. And we still have 1.16 left in that one. Of course we are assuming both meters are reading correctly at the moment. So what we'll do to check that is swap the meters over, they share a common ground so that's no problem. Uh -huh, so we have a difference in meter readings. Because there's no way. Well, no, we haven't because we've swapped them over, so of course they're going to change. Perhaps what we use the one meter to read both caps would be a far better option. Sorry about the wobbly camera work. At the moment we have 1.10 in that cap. And we have 1.07 in that cap. And why it's not changing I do not know. Point one zero, one point zero seven. So we have point zero three of a volt difference there. That's not too bad. Being large caps like they are, they will take a lot of time to balance out. And you're talking about point zero three of a volt across two point four rooms. It will take some time. So we're going to stick with the one meter throughout this test as long as we don't leave ourselves able. Obviously these two meters aren't reading correctly to each other. I would assume this one here is probably wrong. Because this meter here and the others I have like it are normally very very accurate. Shits and giggles, we'll put it back on. 1.08, 1 1.096. Actually, they're probably going to balance out very close to correct. Turn this down to two volts. 1.084, 0 1.094, 0 0.01 of a volt difference at the moment. So I reckon, given enough time, those two are going to equal out quite nicely. We have ended up with slightly more than two volt, uh, one volt in each cap which is very slightly higher than half of the energy we started with. But very close to our one volt in each cap. <coughs> so we're going to leave it at that. Because using the next method, it is going to take a long time those two to balance out like that. 
So, before I go getting myself mixed up, I'm going to put the correct meter on the correct cap. And we'll leave those two meters the same throughout our test. 1.093 is our end voltage. 092 on the look of that and 1.086 okay so we've got our benchmark We're pretty close to one volt in each cap um, I'll go ahead charge these caps back up to their starting point I'll charge one and discharge the other one and then we'll come back and we'll do the transfer via our pulsed inductor here Okay, so we're ready to go for our second half of the test. Um, we will be driving this at 12 hertz, our relay. Um, close enough to a 50% duty cycle. And um, that'll be the frequency the coil is pulsing at. For shits and giggles, I'll have the scope hooked up across our full wave bridge rectifier. We are on um, 10x on the probe. And we should also be 10x on the probe with our scope to give us the correct voltage reading and display of those uh, inductive spikes we are seeing on our um, secondary side of our transformer. So I'm going to disconnect the short across our second cap there. We have two volts there. And even after being shorted uh, for about 10 minutes, you can see it's recovering slightly. But we're talking points. I'll short it out once again. Okay, so we will start our little ticky ticky. So at the moment, we are reading, I'll drop that down another division, 100 volts per division. So you can see we have spikes in excess of 1, 2, 3, 4, 500 volts there. 580 coming off of that uh, secondary side which was actually the primary side so the winding ratio um, this will have less turns and will have more turns and thus amplifying the voltage so I'm probably not going to touch that that might get a bit nasty our transfer is taking place, you can see it's a lot slower than it was before. So it's going to be a while before we see some results. Uh, just have a look at something else. I think we've got a fine one here somewhere. Mm. Just a Give you something to look at while I'm looking for the uh, which seems to have gone tatters. <coughs> okay, let's put you down for a minute. So we had to go to the bulk box to find the neon. And if we put that across here, well you can see we've definitely got some nice high voltage there, that's 110 volts. <coughs> so 
So anyway, as you can see, this is going to take a while. So I'll um, put the camera down and uh, we'll come back when we're close to um, the finishing stages of this transfer um, by way of a uh, pulsed inductor. Okay, so we're getting close now. Um, Cat 2, our end voltage on Cat 2 was 1.086 before, so I'll take it up to 1.088 because it will drop down a bit when we switch it off. It's only been going for about 15 minutes now, so it takes quite some time. Here we are. And we'll stop there. Like I said, that will drop down a bit. Oh, and switch off all at the same time. It's remaining quite steady actually. So um, our end voltage there is 1.088. Slightly more than half of our starting voltage. And our end voltage on this cap is 1.210. Um, and before, just with the uh, pure resistive um, transfer, we ended up with 1.092 on cap 1, 1.086 on cap 2. Here we ended up with 1.210 on cap 1 and 1.088 on cap 2 um, and that was the inductive transfer so a little bit more efficient um, using the inductive transfer so what we're going to do now is run the test again and we're going to put a load um, on this full weight bridge, re bridge rectifier on our secondary um, and I'll simply use this low ESR cap um, what is it, 1000 I think thousand microfarad 35 volts. I'll put this wang dangle angled cap on there as well to try and soak up some of the uh, high voltage spikes and we'll be running this 12 volt LED um, off of those two caps hopefully maybe. Um, no idea, haven't tried it yet so we'll see what happens so I'll go ahead and I'll get all that sorted out, rigged up, ready to go and we'll be back. Okay we're all set to go, Got two volts in our starting cap nothing in our other cap because it is shorted still this meter here is going to read the voltage across the cap driving this 12 volt LED um, just for shits and giggles but uh, I simply want to put a load on um, the transformer and um, see if it's going to make any difference um, in our result here so uh, we're basically driving this LED off the inductive kickback um, of the transformer. So um, I'm going to uh, disconnect our short. I'm hoping that LED will light. It is a 12 volt one. I haven't tried it yet. Um, and start our signal. Oh, it went straight away. And that's going flat chat. It's got 12.47 volts across it. I'm not sure how much current the LED draws, we can check that later at 12 volts with our power supply meter, which we will do, but um, at the moment the LED is flat out bright, running at the full 12 volts, just from the inductive kickback, of course, as our uh, potential difference changes here, drops down, uh, we will see that get less and less like it is now. Nonetheless, it's still nice and bright, and um, that is uh, a direct current, not a pulsed current going through them. Because of our uh, two caps capturing um, the inductive kickback, smoothing it out, so we are st sending a steady current through the LED, not a pulsed one. Um, and now we're going to wait. Put that down to two volts. Now we're going to run through 
through the process again <clears throat> and see what we end up with at the end of the run. So um, I'll be back in about, uh, well to me, another 15 minutes, to you in about uh, 3 seconds. Okay, we've passed the halfway mark on our transfer as far as uh, voltage goes. Of course, um, the closer those two get together, the longer it takes, but um, it's only been like three minutes this time for some reason um, to get to the halfway voltage point or past it. As you can see, transfer seems to be happening a lot faster with the load on the secondary, and our little LED is still nice and bright. I'm guessing it is just a uh, 3.2 volt LED with a resistor in there to cope with the 12 volts or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, at the moment it's only running at uh, 6.8 volts and it's still very bright. But um, for some reason we seem to be way in front at the moment. But we'll see how that goes. 1.4 plus 0.7 2.1 volts or something like that so um, just over we'll see how we go at the end but uh, so far it's looking good and we've been driving this load here with a steady DC current the entire time um, what that load is I don't know I haven't got a uh, amp meter on it as you can tell and we're not going to try and work it out at the moment. We're just um, seeing what happens when we place a load on the secondary side of the transformer while it's pulsing to see if we actually lose anything from these results here. Alright, so uh, we'll be back once again towards the end. Okay, so um, getting close to our cutoff point now. Um, our little LED still going. 4.2 volts across it at the moment. Uh, once again, we're going to go to 1.088, which it is there now. Let it go a little further. And that's it. So the LED is still going. Voltage is dropping very slowly across that cap, which is um, indicating that. Oh, it's nearly dead now. So we use very little power down in the low voltage range, um, but nonetheless, we drove that load through the whole 15 minute process. Uh, it did take about the same time, not sure why it went quicker at the start. But um, anyway, we ended up with 1.09 volts in cap 2, um, close to our 1.08 volts. Um, in cap 1, interestingly enough, we ended up with 1.33 volts. So um, even though we were driving a load the whole time, um, a steady DC current we still ended up with a uh, greater efficiency um, of the energy transfer from one cap to another than we did without that load um, we're only talking what point one two of a volt difference between the two but over 50 farads um, we can see that the um, energy difference between the two is uh, is measurable by quite some degree so um, hmm, interesting what we're going to do next which I haven't seen done yet um, this is our blank test here that we're going to do in the next video we're going to replace our inductor with a uh, simple resistor, I think this one's 1 1.2 ohms um, and we're simply going to pulse charge or pulse transfer the energy from one cap to another and see if it makes any difference than um, a simple 
straight resistive transfer. So that to come, but that's uh, the result of our test. Um, that was just our jumper lead straight across our switch. So we were basically just dumping one cap into another um, where the resistance was just the jumper lead itself. Um, and then we done our uh, resistive inductive transfer and then our resistive inductive transfer with the load um, running off the inductive spikes on the secondary. Uh, quite interesting that we can run a load on it and um, increase the efficiency of the transfer even further than we did here. But um, those are the results. That's what we have. Okay, I'll get this all joined together, muddled up. Uh, grab your popcorn. <laughs> a bit late now. It's the end of the video, but nonetheless, I hope you've had it with you, along with your beers, because um, it's a long one. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you with our pulse resistive transfer uh, in the next video. But what's your thoughts? Is it going to be the same as that? Or are we going to see some sort of result like that? Cheers.